Welcome back to Steel City Sports. So today I wanted to do a bit of a reaction video to the NFL PA's head coaching grades. Um, so I don't know exactly what that means. Like, is this actual players sitting down or is it people who work for the NFL PA doing the gradings? I don't know. You guys are going to have to let me know down in the comments. But I found these some of these grades to be really fascinating. And I just wanted to talk about how I would grade these coaches. Um, if you were one of the people that saw the video I made about halfway through the, the, this past season, I did do a video where I ranked every head coach in the NFL. So I'll put a link to that in the description if you want to see how my thoughts kind of compare to now. Um, like I said, some of these rankings are extremely interesting. So let's just get into it. Um, Josh McDaniels obviously has since been fired from the Raiders. They put him at his, as a D. Um, I would probably put him as an F. He had no business being a head coach, was basically incompetent. I don't even know why he got the job because we saw Josh McDaniels be a head coach before in Denver, and you know it, it went exactly the same way in Vegas than it, that it did in Denver. You know, Some people are just supposed to be coordinators, and there's nothing wrong with that. You still make a lot of money as a coordinator in the NFL, and, and that's definitely the type of job that he should have as a head coach. It's just not a good idea at all. Um, he will never be a head coach in the NFL for the rest of his life, so F for me. Um, Ron Rivera at a C. I think is pretty fair, and I think he's kind of in a similar boat as uh, as Josh McDaniels. Not that he's as bad as him, but he's a guy that should now in today's NFL be a, a coordinator, a defensive coordinator. I think he would be one of the best defensive coordinators in the NFL. He's a guy that could maybe get another head coaching job down the line. I think it's a very highly unlikely percentage that he's ever a head coach again, but I think it's possible. You know, we saw Dan Quinn do exactly, like, I think Ron Rivera is going to have a very similar career path that we just saw Dan Quinn do, because after Dan Quinn left Atlanta, or was fired by Atlanta, went to Dallas, and was widely considered one of, if not the best defensive coordinators in the entire league, and now he's a head coach again. So, you know, if Ron Rivera goes somewhere like, I don't know, Philadelphia, well, no, they can't because they already hired Vic Fangio, but if he goes to, like, the 49ers, who have a vacancy there, um, and he just rocks it, I could see a team, you know, a desperate team going out there and getting him. Um, so C, I think, is fair. Um, I, I think he would be an A-plus defensive coordinator, but as a head coach, C feels um, fair to me. Um, next is Arthur Smith as a C plus, who's now my team's offensive coordinator. Um, still kind of have mixed opinions on that. I'm gonna let you know wait for the season to actually happen and see how the offense looks before I really judge that move. But as a head coach, C plus, I guess. I mean, I I would probably move it a little lower. I'd probably go like C minus as a head coach, if not even like a D plus. Like, just not a lot of of good stuff to point to, especially when you look at the offensive personnel on the Atlanta Falcons. You know, they invested a lot of high-end draft capital in bringing in some weapons there with B. John and Kyle Pitts and Drake London. And it, it felt like they just weren't really being utilized very correctly, especially Kyle Pitts. Um, you know, you can blame some of that on the quarterback, but ultimately, you know, um, Desmond Ritter was the guy that Arthur Smith chose. You know, he wanted him to develop him. So I don't know. Uh, as, as a head coach, Maybe down the line he could be one again if he really rocks it with my Steelers. But, I, again, I kind of see that as unlikely. I think coordinator is the job that he deserves. So you're kind of noticing a trend with these bottom coaches is that they should just be coordinators. You know, Everyone wants to rush to become a head coach because you just make so much more money as a head coach. You know, As, like, as one of the best coordinators in the NFL, you make like two, three, four million dollars, which is a lot of money. But as a head coach, you're at like the very least making like $12 million. So that's such a massive step up. And that's why these guys who really should be coordinators rush to get head coaching jobs just because it's so unbelievably lucrative. Um, and of course, like it's basically fully guaranteed. Um, so even if you suck at it, you're going to get most of that money. Um, next is Todd Bowles at a B minus. I'd probably put Todd Bowles a little higher. I'd probably put him around a B plus. It's going to be interesting to see what the Bucks do next year because they have a lot of decisions to make in free agency. You know, they have a lot of key free agents with Baker, obviously, Mike Evans, Winfield, and Levante David. Like, they really have to um, make some big, crucial decisions here. And uh, also, they lost their offensive coordinator, Dave Canales, who's now the Panthers head coach. So we're going to have to see uh, who is replaced there. Um, I don't know. I think there's a lot of uncertainty with Tampa going forward next year. However, I think he's a good head coach. Um, probably not the guy that I would hire just because I have a strong offensive bias at the head coach position. But, 
you can't deny Todd Bowles is one of the best defensive minds currently in the NFL. You know, won a Super Bowl as a defensive coordinator with Tampa. Um, and I think they really overachieved this year. You know, if you would have told me before the year started that Tampa was going to win a playoff game this year, and especially the team they beat, the Philadelphia Eagles, like definitely a great year for Todd Bowles. So I would probably put him a little higher than a B minus, probably like a B, B plus. This is the first one that I think I, I wildly disagree with, and that's Dennis Allen as a B minus. I don't know how the hell Dennis Allen still has a job. Like, what did the New Orleans Saints see this year? And they were like, yeah, let's run that back. Like, what the hell are you thinking? I think he should be gone. Uh, another guy, again, I, ha I hate to sound like a broken record, but it's just kind of the reality with these bottom-tier coaches is this is another guy who should have a coordinator job but is currently a head coach. Um, I would be shocked if he is – if he lasts this year – Okay, but if he doesn't get fired in the next offseason, unless the Saints are, like, incredible this year, which I don't foresee happening, I would probably put Dennis Allen as, like, a D head coach. Like, they've had talent on the team, and they've just been, like, completely mediocre. Um, the next one is kind of a controversial one, Bill Belichick at a B-. minus. I would still put Bill higher than a B-. minus. Now, back in that, that video where I ranked the head coaches, I think I had Bill at like the 22nd best head coach in the NFL. I was wrong on that. I mean, it was really just based off of this year, so I guess. But just in a vacuum, I would probably put Bill higher as, as of 2024. I think he should be higher than a B-, minus, you know, because he definitely has his flaws. He's, he's very controlling. He wants to, you know, call everything, and he's really bad at personnel moves, I think. That's kind of everyone acknowledges that. That's the fatal flaw with Bill Belichick is he wants to run the show. He wants to pick the players and coach the team, and he's just not equipped to do both those things. He's the, the greatest defensive mind in the history of the sport, but when it comes to being a GM, he's really bad at that. So I feel like that is what's factoring his grade here because if you're just factoring him as a coach, he's still an A in my book because – He's the, the best defensive mind in the league still. However, if you're going to couple that with his GM ability, which I guess is like it comes with him, you know, he's not, I don't think he's going to go somewhere unless he has full control. So B minus, if you're factoring the GM stuff, I think is kind of fair. But just from an X's and O's standpoint, I would definitely rate him a lot higher, like an A. Um, Kevin Stefanski at a B minus is actually kind of interesting because this guy just won coach of the year. You know, he, he's won two coach of the years just in his four years with Cleveland. So, you know, that right there should tell you like he's actually one of the best head coaches in the NFL. And I think he is really good. You know, I don't know exactly where I'd rank him now. I can't remember where I ranked him on that list, but um, had a hell of a year this year. You know, that's the reason why he won coach of the year, getting that, you know, that many different starting quarterbacks. You know, I think they had five different starting quarterbacks and for them to still win 11 games, I think is, is wildly impressive for Stefanski. I would definitely put him a lot higher than a B minus. I'd say A A at, at the lowest for me. Um, here's a, another weird one. Robert Sala as a B. What has Robert Sala shown you guys to, to warrant being a B? I think at be, the best case scenario, he's a C. He's a solid C. I would probably put him at like a C minus though. Cause it's like, what has he really shown you as a, head coach. You know, he's been a head coach for a good while now. I want to say like three or four years he's been a head coach and the Jets haven't done shit in his his tenure there. And you can talk about all you want with how badly they're they're run. Like they have talent on that team. And I think the only reason he kept his job this year is because they have that that asterisk of oh well Aaron Rodgers like we built the team around Aaron and then he got hurt. So it's not our fault that we sucked this year. You know, I I, I get that argument. I think he he was really it was very bizarre how he handled the whole um, Zach Wilson like benching him for oh god what was that guy's name they that played in the the Black Friday game against the Dolphins I can't even remember the guy's name but the fact that he started in an NFL game like jobs should have been lost over the fact of that guy playing because he's legitimately the worst <laughs> the worst quarterback I've ever seen in my life I can't even remember his name. Um, so, yeah, he definitely handled the Zach Wilson thing weird. He's had a lot of defensive personnel. If they don't produce next year, and by produce I mean making the playoffs, he's going to be gone. I would be shocked if him and the GM last pass next year if they fail to make the playoffs, which is going to be really difficult in that division. Now, this is <sighs> – if you've been a longtime listener of the channel, this is the one that I, I couldn't disagree with more, and that is Brandon Staley at a B. 
the Chargers were about a day away from getting blacklisted on this channel. Because after that Raiders game, I said, sorry, I said, if he's not fired by the end of this week, I'm never talking about the Chargers ever again on this channel. That's how, the, ugh, just talking about him gets me worked up because he's the biggest fucking idiot I've ever seen have a head coaching job in the entire NFL. And I'm already hearing chatter that he might get a defensive coordinator job, which just kind of goes into another narrative of like, who do you know? Because he's friends with a lot of like the high-end coaches. Like he's good friends with McVay. He's good friends with Shanahan. So it's going to drive me nuts if I have to talk about him again. I think he's a complete moron. Um, it, it's one thing to be a bad coach. Like we've seen other bad coaches. That's fine. Um, go to like bad organizations. You think of like Freddie Kitchens or Hugh Jackson, like some of those really bad Browns head coaches. At least they have the argument of, well, my team sucked. Like, what do you want me to do? Look at the, the players on the field. Look at the roster Brandon Staley had. It's a, like a god squad, like a, a superstars everywhere. Hall of Fame level talent all over that roster. All pro level guys all over that roster. And to for how bad they were this year, I, I'm so glad he got fired. Because if he would have kept his job, I legitimately would have had a brain aneurysm. If he, if he was still employed by the Chargers... I would have lost my mind. He was public enemy number one. Like I said, if you're a longtime listener of the channel, you know how I feel about Brandon Staley. We did countless rants about him over this past season. The fact that he's a B, I think, completely like delegitimizes this list. I completely botched that word. I'm not even going to try it again. But that's awful. You know, I, I wouldn't even just put him at an F. Like I would ask, is there a tier below F we can put Brandon Staley in where he's just in his own tier? as the worst head coach I've ever seen with my two eyes. Um, sorry about that. Uh, uh, Matt Eberflus is next at B. Um, I can kind of see it because he's a really good defensive mind, um, but I, if I'm the Bears, there's no chance in hell that, that he would be back. Just for the fact that you're going to be drafting a generational quarterback, I would definitely love to have like an offensive mind in there to work with Caleb Williams going forward. But that's not the Bears' M.O., you know, they definitely stepped out of their comfort zone hiring uh, Matt Nagy. They ran him out of town and brought in a defensive guy. So it fits with their culture to have a defensive head coach. I think he can definitely coach the defensive side of the ball. Not really my cup of tea, though. I'd probably put him more towards, like, C, maybe a C plus. But I think B is a tad high for him. Next is Mike Vrabel, B+, plus, currently unemployed, uh, will not be coaching next year in a uh, insane thing to me like that's crazy that he's not going to have a job next year because I think he is a top 10 head coach you know I would definitely put him higher than B B plus I'd say at the very least an A to A minus um, you look at the rosters he had with Tennessee and they were basically an AFC juggernaut for a little stretch of time you know went to an AFC title game they were a one seed and he was doing that all with Ryan Tannehill as his quarterback I think he's really good at getting the most out of guys because like, player for player, their roster was never really that impressive. Now, I never looked at the Titans and was like, wow, that's like a top five roster in the NFL. Yet somehow, they got to an AFC championship game. And somehow, they were a one seed. Like, that's really hard to do. So, I give him a lot of credit for that. I'm pretty sure he did win a coach of the year. So, he's really good. I'm shocked that he didn't get hired by any of those teams. Um Matt LaFleur, a B plus. I think Matt LaFleur is honestly the most underrated head coach in the NFL. Just looking at what he did with uh, Jordan Love this year, I think speaks volumes to that. Um, even like with Aaron, like Aaron Rodgers last year with Mike McCarthy, Aaron Rodgers was still in his prime, but statistically was not looking very good. That's why they drafted Jordan Love. Like it looked like he was taking a step down, starting to go towards the later part of his career. And then you bring in Matt LaFleur and like completely changed the offense and led to Aaron getting back-to-back -back MVPs. And now he's trying to do it again now with Jordan Love having a phenomenal year. Um, and this is another thing. like You just compare it to in division. Like Look at the Bears compared to the Packers with their quarterback situation. You give your young quarterback who needs development an offensive mind who he can work with, who he can bounce things off of, who knows what he's talking about you see how, how much better developed Jordan Love is than Justin Fields because Justin Fields has a defensive head coach who doesn't really get the offensive side of the ball, who can't really relate with Justin Fields. So I think that's a big deal. I think he is, like I said, the most underrated head coach in football currently. Next is Jim Harbaugh at a B+. Um, 
I don't know if it's a Steelers fan, if I'm like subconsciously wired to just not like him. I think he's definitely overrated. I think his career was saved by Lamar Jackson. Like Jim Har or excuse me, not Jim, John. John Harbaugh was going to be fired by the Ravens had they not lucked into Lamar. So I give the GM a lot of credit for pulling the trigger on Lamar Jackson, taking him with the last pick in the first round. John Harbaugh, <laughs> like his entire career for me was saved by Lamar. He's really good at building staffs. I think like when it comes to building a coaching staff, he is among the best in the NFL at that. But from an X's and O's standpoint, he doesn't call the plays. Um, so yeah, he's he's like more like a CEO type coach where he just manages the team. He's good at that. I just think he's he's overrated. A B plus, I guess, is fine um, because you know he did definitely embrace Lamar. But like I said, I think he really really lucked in to getting Lamar Jackson, who saved his career. I'd probably put him at like a B. Um, D'Amico Ryan's is next up as an A minus. Was a rookie head coach this year, obviously, and was. A freaking stud. I think A- minus is definitely warranted. You could definitely even talk me into A. Like, going to a franchise that was a perpetual disaster for, like, half a decade. And then he goes there, and they go from worst in their division to best in their division and won a playoff game with a rookie quarterback beating the number one pass defense in the NFL in their playoff game. The guy's a stud. Can't wait to see what he goes on to do because I think he can be one of the best coaches in the NFL. I'm talking, like, top five. He's that good. Um, and it's crazy because he's defensive. Like, I don't know. Like, like I said, I have a strong offensive bias, but D'Amico, he's just doing something right. And he really feels like he's like a player. Like that's how he coaches. And, uh, he's just, I think one of the best motivators, his guys want to run through a brick wall for him. He's just awesome. Here's a crazy one. Frank Reich, because Frank Reich didn't even last the entire year yet. He was rated as an A minus, you know, Frank Reich is one of five coaches in the history of the NFL to be fired before his first season came to an end as a head coach. Like, that is historically dreadfully bad. Now, do I think Frank Reich deserved to be fired? No, because I think David Tepper, the owner of the Panthers, is the worst owner in the NFL. He's hot-headed. Um, he's just super rich. So whenever, uh, you know, whenever this shit doesn't pan out for him instantly, he just freaks out. Um, do I think Frank Reich is, like, awesome? No, but did he deserve to be fired? No, like, he wanted Stroud with the first overall pick, but Tepper stepped in and said, no, I want Bryce Young. So I, I don't think it was really warranted to fire Frank Reich, but would I rank him as an A minus? Absolutely not. I'd probably put him more in like the C category. Um, and then the last one for this slide is Shane Steichen at an A minus similar light with, uh, D'Amico, like, um, as a rookie head coach, completely overachieved with the Colts, especially with their starting quarterback, Anthony Richardson, basically missing the entire year, elevating Gardner Minshew to a very productive starter in the NFL. The Colts had no business winning that many games, but you know, I think if Philly had a re redo, they would take Steichen over Sirianni any day. Um, I was going to do all the coaches, but as I tend to do, I ended up rambling a lot more. So I'll do part two tomorrow where we talk about, you know, the other head coaches on the other slide. But let me know what you thought about these coaches. Do you think these grades were fair? And let me know your grades for these coaches. If you made it this far, appreciate you listening. Please like and subscribe.